and uh, this is based on rotation. A uniform rod of mass m naught and length l is free to rotate about the pivot uh, its left and release from rest when the rod is 30 degrees. It's free to rotate about a pivot at its left and n is released from rest when the rod is 30 degrees. Okay, I see. It's released as when the rod is actually 30 degrees below the horizontal. Okay. Uh, with respect to the pivot, the rod has a has an inertia. They are so kind. They have given us the inertia, rotational inertia. If the following expressions correctly represent the magnitude of the net torque acted on the rod about the pivot at the moment this to the rod is released. Okay. First things first, we need to know all the forces that are acting on it. And I think the only force acting on this guy is mg. Obviously, a pivot is also exerting a force, but that force of the pivot, wherever it is, I don't really care the direction about the direction because its torque about that point of act, about that pivot has to be zero because its distance is zero, right? Recall what's the formula for the torque? F R F sine theta. R F sine theta, where R is the distance of the point of action uh, and the pivot. F is the force and theta is the angle between these two guys. Right, so we just have one force over here, mg, that is providing the necessary torque. Um, so mg acts on the center of mass, which is obviously at the center. So mg and this distance is half. So it's mg, so r is L over 2, r is L over 2, f is mg. Now the question is, what is the angle between these two? So for the angle, we need to do a little bit of geometry over here. Um, uh, this is the, uh, this is the center of mass where mg is acting like this. And this is the, um, what do you call it as? This is the action point, which is going something like this. And rather than drawing an arrow, I can just draw the line of action where the force, where the, where the you know, the, the, the r is. So r is along this, along this line. Right, this angle is given as 30 degree to us. So if I draw a parallel line at this point, if this is 30, then don't you think this is also 30 as per alternate angles? And if this is 30 and this is obviously 90, so what is this angle? No, 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 it's not, it's not 30 if you're thinking about 30. Uh, we can say that sum of all these angles of 180, that's one way to look at it. And other ways, if this is 30 degree, then look at these two angles. Aren't these vertically opposite? So this is also 30. And this angle is 90, right? So what is this angle? 90 minus 30 is 60 degrees. And that is indeed the angle that we were looking for, that this between this and this. So it should come as sine 30 degrees, sine 60 degree. All right, if you are thinking that, why have you taken the acute angle? Why have you not taken the obtuse angle, which is over here? Um, which is over, let me change the color, which is this one and this one. Why have you not taken this? It's totally fine. You can take that as well. It doesn't really matter. This angle is 120 degree, but then remember that sine 120 is same as sine 60. So it doesn't really matter, right? Always take the acute angle. That's more beneficial for us because we don't really want to go into trigonometry when we are doing AP physics, at least we can try to avoid. The correct answer is option 